Sometimes in Excel, we use complicated formulas and then share the formulas with our colleagues who just cannot figure out what we've done. And sometimes we refer back to our sheets. We don't realize what the formulas actually mean. In today's video, I'm going to share with you how to name cells and define ranges so that your formulas are super easy to read in plain English. Without further ado, let's jump into it. Let's have a look at how we can use the named ranges and cell ranges in Excel to help us with our formula. So the first thing we are going to do is let's highlight our data right here. And what we want to do is let's go to the shortcut Alt M. Now we open up the formulas tab over here and you can see create from selection or name manager. Name manager will allow you to see everything that's created. But right now we're going to click on the create from selection. Let's click on that. Uncheck the left column because we just want to have the top labeled right here as the values. Press OK. Now what it has simply done is create a cell or a row called category. If we type in equals category, you can see that we have category come up and that shows you we have all the categories over here and it drags it down. Now, what we can do is even do quantity sold and you can press a tab. You can see that this is the data that's been selected. We'll have a look at how this works in our formulas. What we could also do is name some of the cells. So well, let's go across here. We have a category type and instead of having just the title and the category type, we can simply take this cell B3 and change the name to category type. Category type. Now why we do that is we already have a column here called category. So to avoid confusion, let's just do category type selection or any other name that makes sense to your sheet. Press OK. And instead of this cell reference now being B3, it comes up as category type. I'm going to do the same for the discount. Let's just type in discount and press OK. D3 has now been changed to discount and a price threshold. OK, let's just type this threshold right here to avoid any confusion with the unit price. Press OK. Now let's have a look at our formulas. Let's just unhide this and have a look. And we'll just have a look at how these namings of data really helps us in our helper columns. Let's break this down. When we go across to this column here with the discount, we have a hard coded number and hard coded cells, which is very difficult to understand what's happening if you have a large data set. So the best way to do this is let's look at the formula if E8. So E8 is actually the quantity sold. Let's go across to E8, the unit price. So let's go here. Let's type in a unit price. You can see that the unit price comes up here because we have named these tab across. Now, instead of having a hard coded number over here, we're going to be using the price threshold. There we go. We have price threshold. Let's go across. And once again, instead of a hard coded number, we go to discount. Now that is very easy to understand, even if you didn't want to build the formula. It's a unit price. If the unit price is greater than or equal to the price threshold, then add the discount amount. Press enter and you can see a spill error. And that's simply because we have the data below it. So let's just delete that and it drags across the formula. Now it's very easy to see what your formula actually means. Once again, we can go to the helper cell and instead of E8, we are going to type in unit price. And again, instead of U price, we type in a price threshold and again, the unit price. So this is a very easy way to drag across. And now we have the helper two times the column here for the discount. Again, F8 can be deciphered as the discount amount and G8 is the price if we want to have it as a price 
above 1,499. So we can leave it as a G8 and that can be dragged down. We can also look at the differences here. So you have the final discount amount. Now where it gets really fun is when you look at the bigger formula and now you have cells to be able to put to the actual references. So let's go and change this from E8 to unit price, which is effectively the same, but it's going to take across all of your data. And let's type in instead of 499 the price threshold and again the unit price so let's type that in and we take away the discount and we have once again the unit price and we change this to the unit price again now here we can read the formula a lot easier and look at the logical test if the unit price is greater than the price threshold here then you take the unit price you take away the discount you calculate a discount and you times it back by the unit price if it meets the logic and if not you're just going to give us the unit price so let's press ok you can see that the full formula is now there with the help of the named ranges it makes it much more clearer to understand where you have gone wrong just want to share a simple example again here with you and here we're going to add a 25% markup on fruit and veg so here we are going to change the discount to 25% we are not using a price threshold at this time we're just using the category type so these are the two variables of course you can use three variables in any of your formulas but just for this example we're going to use two now once again we have b8 here and instead of b8 we are going to change this to category and instead of having fruit and veg we have named this cell to category type let's type that in so if the category here equals the category type here then what we are going to do is we are going to add the unit price and the unit price is going to be taking away the 25 percent and if that is going to be multiplied by the 25 percent and if it doesn't meet the fruit and veg requirement it's just going to return us the unit price so once again another way to add another variable and you can add as many variables as you want press ok you have now only the fruit and veg that has a 25 percent discount not a markup here and a 25 percent here now if you want to add or delete change any of the formulas you can of course change those at your different requirements thank you for watching this video today and if you like content like this i would appreciate a like and subscribe and until next time happy spreadsheeting